Now we're going to look at this unit at working with people, specifically the people who are acting in your video. Now you may have professional actors, probably though you have your friends or amateurs that are working with you. In any case, you have to work with these people to be in your video, so we call that working with talent. Professional actors in general tend to be way better than you think they are. Often I think people have the perception acting is an easy thing to do, not hard at all. But in reality, acting is quite difficult. The advantage of a professional actor is when they come into your studio or when they come on location, they right away know what to do. They can say their lines very clearly, quickly, and smoothly. It's really a huge advantage. Amateurs, on the other hand, tend to be much worse than you think they are. You think your friends can act, but actually your friends are not going to be able to act at all. It's going to turn out terrible. And you may think that, well, it's passable, it kind of works, but uh, it doesn't really do that. You're much better off if you're going to video record real people to just do real people doing real things. But if you're going to have people who are your friends acting or pretending to be something, uh, you might want to think about that. Even if your production is a small production, hiring professionals will get you a lot of benefit. Here we have a picture inside the studio with some talent that's come in to work with us. And usually when you have talent, you've got someone who's kind of taking care of things. In this case, this young lady here, she's doing a research project, so she need, needs to execute a video for that project. And she does that by coming to the lab using the green screen and then having some talent here pretending to do something. When we talk about professional versus amateur, we need to think about even if they're professional, you still need to help them get ready. And the most important thing to help is to have your script ready. If you don't have a script, then you don't have anything for the actors to act. And this normally means you need to have a script ready way beforehand, not just when they show up. And best of all is to have a script ready and then you give it to a production company or a director or a manager or a talent agency and they can have people audition reading parts of the script and you can see who do you like best when they read the script that you've written. Of course they don't read the whole thing, they just read part of it to give you an example. When you're looking at your talent, even uh, amateur or pro, it's best to be very clear what do you want. How do you want them to act? What do you want them to project? Do you want them to act like they're young and naive or older and wise? Do you want them to be super happy or to be really stern and serious? You need to tell them these things because the talent doesn't know what you want. They just have to guess from reading and that's really bad. The worst thing you can do is just say, do what you think and then they do something and you say, mm, that's not what I like. Try something else. That's going to make everyone frustrated and waste a lot of time. You need to be clear about the attitude, the character. How do you want them to look, appearance? Do you want them to look formal, informal? What color of clothes would you like them to wear? It's very important to just tell them. What do you want their facial expressions to look like or their voice accents? Professional actors are very good at taking input on this. Tell them what you want and they will be happy. They even like it more when you tell them specifically what you want. They're waiting for you to tell them. If they have to guess, they know that things are going to be trouble later when you say you don't like it. So don't be shy about giving instructions. Here we can see inside the lab we have our director who's getting the project ready. She has her shot schedule there and her script and she's going to go ahead and she's checking everything that's being done and what they need for the next setup for the next shot. Well we've got a few
few makeup bits and pieces here, bits and bobs. So let's take a look at that. One of the main things you can have is foundation. So foundation goes on before you put on any makeup. And foundation kind of makes the whole skin look smoother, gets rid of any kind of blemishes, and just overall makes it more consistent. It's very helpful with the lighting, especially. So let's take a look at these specifically. You can see the different tones, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. That's because they go for different people's skin tones. Then we have these sponges. And these sponges are specifically made for putting on the makeup. That is, they dab onto the makeup. So after you put the makeup on, you actually go ahead and use these to move it around and blend it in. So they're for what's called blending. So very, very helpful for that. Now, another thing we often will keep around is a little spray bottle, like this here, a spray bottle. A spray bottle is for water, and you use it on these sponges to help move the makeup around. So, a little bottle of water. It's best to have uh, distilled water or um, filtered water so that you're not causing any kind of allergic reaction or problems that way. Okay, so makeup like that. Now, another bit I have here is a highlighter or a special kind of makeup that goes underneath eye. Now, why would you want something to go underneath the eye? Well, the reason for going underneath the eye is that you often have those dark lines or dark colors under the eye. So those dark colors can be right under here, sometimes they'll be over here, sometimes they'll be all around your eye, you get a panda look. This is really difficult when you shoot video. It's so easy for that dark color to come out. It's actually kind of bluish kind of tone. This kind of highlighter goes under the eye specifically, nowhere else in the face, just under there, and you dab it in, and then you blend it in with the sponge, and then it takes away that dark look. So it's very handy. So this kind of highlighter, there's all different kinds, just go online and check for it. There's no shortage of advice online on how to use makeup. Tons and tons of that stuff for sure. Okay, so. If we look at, we've got our sponges, our foundation, we've got some highlighter there like that. Okay, that all looks very good. You can buy way, way more. This stuff gets expensive fast. You can buy tons of stuff like this.